The Auto Club 500 on Fox is presented by Q Motor Oil, the heat-activated oil that helps maximize the power of your engine. Unleash all your horses. And sponsored by the all-new 2006 Ford Fusion. Put your life in drive. By Sprint, proud partner of the NASCAR Next Del Cup Series. And by State Farm, great service and great rates. You can get it all from State Farm. You got to be willing to fight for it. Craig Biffle trying to double up here in California. Yesterday, the Bush race winner, and today he is out front of full center Kurt Bush by 1.9 seconds. Jeff Burton in third, Jimmy Johnson fourth. There's a new fifth place car, and it's big orange. Tony Stewart, the defending Nextel Cup champion, drove around Kyle Bush to put himself in fifth. And I've been watching the scoring monitor. He started back in the 12th position, and he's been one of the cars that seems to be able to run laps about equal to Greg Biffle in the 16, our leader, and he's been mowing him down as he's up there now battling Jimmy Johnson for fourth in the 48. Leader just went by the line. Leader's down in the middle of one and two, and here comes these guys. So they, they've, the 16 cars definitely got the, uh, got everybody's number. For more on Stewart, Dick Bergman. Michael Stewart's crew chief, Greg Cipinelli, this morning, Mike, and he said that so far this has been a fun, trouble-filled weekend. They unloaded that number 20 car, a brand new car, and it was fast right off the truck. Stewart, for his part, has simply refused to talk about what has gone on last weekend at Daytona. He said to the reporters, if you want to ask me about this week, we'll talk all you want. You want to talk about Daytona? Go talk to somebody else. And Stewart said he's in such a good mood that the reporters can't tick him off here in California. You're right, Dick. He, he went on to say, the only thing I know about history is that in all of history, nobody's been able to change it. And the other thing so is, let's move on. you don't learn from history. That's the other thing history teaches us. <laughs> see the different lines you can run on this racetrack. We talked about that earlier in the show. If your car is a little bit tight, you know, you can move it around. You can move it up to the middle of the racetrack. You can run the top or the middle. At one end of the racetrack, you can run around the bottom at the other. Yeah, and I just noticed the sun's peeking through pretty good. That changes things dramatically here. Uh, clouds, overcast, tracks one way. That's why these drivers have got to continually be talking to the crew, tell them what's going on out on the racetrack guy that just lost a couple of positions there in that black car, Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. He started ninth. He had kind of maintained Matt, but he just lost two positions. Larry Mack right now is just trying to hang on. He's got a balance issue. He says the loose end is just really killing him. The car just has an uneasy feeling, but he can't. The biggest issue, he just cannot get back in the gas. The car is way too tight on exit. He has to wait for the car before he can get back in the gas. Right now, he's just figuring out the game plan for their first stop of how to fix it. Mike, what about that paint job? <laughs> DuPont is uh, Gordon's sponsor. DuPont Automotive finishes. Hot Hughes is their custom color line. That's a Chip Foose design. Street riders are familiar with, with Chip's great designs and his work. It takes a long time to paint those flames. California kid right there. Yeah. But one thing I noticed, Larry, as that car comes off the corner of the 24, the nose is really high up in the air, like it's packing the nose. That's going to make it really, really tight off. And of course, tight off means as he goes through the middle of the corner, to the exit of the corner, he's turning the steering wheel, but the car's not turning. It's just sliding the front tires. Nothing's happening. You got a lot of wheel and no response. Kevin Harvick up the racetrack just a little bit in the icebreakers. Good wrench Chevy. Dale Jr. trying to move past on the inside, and Harvick waves him by. Steve? Well, Mike, there's a good reason for that. Kevin Harvick started 15th, moved up to 10th, but he's dropped to 12th because his car has gotten very loose in and on the throttle. It's also running hot. Now, down here in the pit box, they have a picture tape that shows the tape configuration. They're talking about pulling some tape off that grill. You can see they're also numbered one, two, and three. Todd Barrier, the crew chief, will tell one of the mechanics which part of the tape to remove. But as Larry Mack says, no free lunch in Arrow. But Darrell, I'm going to tell you what, that is 
is not very much opening on that race car right there. I, I kind of find it hard to believe that, that they started the race with that much of that nose taped up. Well, remember, Larry, uh, the, the Fusion and the Monte Carlo both have new noses. Uh, they went through Daytona without a whole lot of problem, but it was cool in Daytona. Today it's a little warmer, and uh, they're going to have to play with that tape a little bit. But that is, you're right, that's not near enough opening for a racetrack like this. And the reason they put that tape on the nose is because it really helps the aero part of the car. It nails the, the front end down, plus it helps the straightaway speed. So you try to run as much as you can, but you've got to have enough open to cool the water in the radiator. And that's an easy adjustment. Tape on, tape off. Pretty easy to do. It's kind of like wax. It makes me want to clap. <laughs> Greg Biffle, 2.8 seconds ahead of Kurt Busch, Jeff Burton, Tony Stewart, and Jimmy Johnson in the Auto Club 500, presented by Q. Seven laps in at the California Speedway. Greg Biffle in a Ford leading Jeff Burton, followed by Kurt Busch. So far, Biffle has led the most laps in this race, and Jack Roush at his Ford's Jeff Hammond crowded up near the top. Real strong right now. He takes the lead from the pole sitter right there, Kurt Busch. The 16 car now showing the way. Carl Edwards. Right Carl Edwards is he's now broke up there in the top 10. Looking really good. All his teammates right now, just all the Roush cars are coming to the front right now. But this young man right here, he's been doing really good all day long. He's worked his way outside of Jeff Gordon right there. And Matt Kenseth has worked his way up uh, to 12th as well. As you can see right there, Greg Biffle may be leading. Carl Edwards is 8th. Jamie McMurray in the 26th car this year. ninth. Mark Martin, hey, the veteran campaigner, he's 10th. And Matt Kenseth started way back in 31st. He's already up to 12th. Greg Biffle won the Bush race yesterday here and won this race last year. Mike? Of the 33 major races held at California Speedway, Jack Roush has won 10 of them, including three here in Cup. How about Jeff Burton, who's moved up to second place? Yeah, I was just going to say, he got by uh, Kurt Busch there a minute ago. This race has taken on a very similar appearance to yesterday's race. Biffle and uh, Jeff, Jeff Burton chasing him down, just like yesterday, over the long run. Let's see how he's doing here. He's down into turn one. Now that's right at about 190 right there. 14 degrees of banking. This is where you really know how good your car is. If you can get back in the gas, come off of that corner wide open, that's when you're really handling well. You don't have to play with the throttle. You're not pushing, you're not loose. We're gonna go down into three. You can really pack it in here, get it on the bottom. Yesterday he was so good here off turn four. And he is again today, Larry, right on the bottom, accelerating up. And it doesn't sound like he's having to play with that throttle a lot off the corner, which helps that straightaway speed. Here comes Tony Stewart in that 20 car, going by Kurt Busch in the two. This is a battle for third. Yellow. Caution's out, caution's out. Debris in turn three, tracks clear. First caution of the day, it comes working lap 31. We had a late race caution yesterday in the NASCAR Bush Series when a driver's glove came out on the track. Officials thought it might be a piece of metal debris or bodywork. Through the caution, our long lenses showed it was a driver's glove, and NASCAR checked but could not determine whose glove it was that brought out that final caution. Well, it wasn't mine. Pit stop's coming. 